whatever you're streaming. Okay, okay. Ah, oh, good. It looks like the audio is picking up as well. I also want to hold on. Can I stream? Can I share two things here? Right. Well, we got your um, Terminator session up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's literally the one on the right is my Apple. Um, Apple. What am I talking about? Apple. The top. This the top the one on the right is my Raspberry Pi, which mm -hmm. I'm going to be attacking. On my left here is my Linux session, which is uh, my laptop. So as you can see, two different IP addresses, yeah. which I'm highlighting here. Mm -hmm. um, 230 is my Raspberry Pi. 76 is my laptop. OK, so what, I'm, what I've done here is I've created this little program. I'm just showing. Can you see that? What, you can. Well, Sorry? you'd have to say what it is. So we know. It's, it says uh, um, it's the source code for the Vulnerable program. Mm, no, I can't. I can no, no. Um, we can only see the terminal. The um, So we've got gerbil at spades and gerbil at cryptoc. Okay, um, I'm just... Two columns see, see. And that's it, basically. Okay, so I'm going to see if I... I'm just, is there any way of that chain streaming to Windows at once? Do you know? Is it? Have you got two terminals? Sorry, have you got two? Um, two Windows. There's a Notepad two, window right. in the terminal. You can share your entire screen on uh, on on Discord. That might ah, we got it there now. Mm. Oh, you can see that. Yeah, we can see it now. Yeah. Okay. So you can see that, and can you see that? Yeah. So vulnerable server program compiled with, and then your GCC. Okay, well, I'll I'll take you through this, um, the the vulnerability really to start with. Okay, and then it's going to take me ages to go through all this again because, um, like I say, I've forgotten the exploit and how many, but we can get there. Um, okay, literally, this is a vulnerable server. Um, I've actually what I've done is I've literally stole this off the internet because I didn't really re redo everything. Um, you've got your port number, which is four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, that's what it listens to. Um, you've got the buffer, which I've shrunk down to ten. It usually it was originally like one thousand and twenty-four. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've added this shell card. Do you know what shell card is? I do. No, I don't. Okay. Sh imagine shell code is. Um, if you've got, let's say, a chunk of a binary which does things, mm -hmm. um, for example, what this does, it sends back um, a, a session, a shell, to the IP address of, not that, but, oh, you can't see that, can you? Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to be right, Pen. Right, change windows. Entire screen, that might be better. Hmm. So is that the command that you're going to run on the other end? Hold on a sec, I'm just trying to... Okay. Um... Oh, bad. So this, this is the, this is the um, shell card. Now, the reason you wouldn't normally put shell card within a server itself, I've only done this just for, to make it easier. Mm -hmm. um, because when you start an app, it shares the same memory space and page, etc. And just to keep things easy for you, I thought then I'd, I'd put this easy for me as well, actually. Um, so what happens is when you when you start this program from scratch, it'll tell you where the shell card is in memory. Mm -hmm. um, it'll tell you what part it's running on. Um, so what the idea is when you when you say, run a program. I don't know how, oh yeah, and also the vulnerability is here, it reads, it's reading this much space, which is 4096, mm. in, into a 10-character buffer, which is oh, yeah. So there's quite, quite an overrun then, it's not an off by one error? No, 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 not really. Um, so this is just, you know, it's just to make things easier. Yeah. So what happens is, this here, it allocates 10 characters, um, for this array called buffer. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and if it's allocated 10 spaces, what you're doing down here is telling it to read. Every time it reads this many characters, put it into buffer. Mm -hmm. So what happens is it reads the first 10 OK, but then it reads the rest of it, which is 4,086, which means all that them characters go somewhere. Now, what them characters, where them characters go is dependent on the stack in the memory of the um, application that's running. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you imagine how, do you know, do you know, you know about stacks, pointers and stuff, don't you? I'm guessing. Yeah, it's telling you um, where the memory is. Right? Yeah, so it's, it is in, in a nutshell, yeah. Mm. Um, and it also tells you where to go for the next instruction, which is the program counter, mm -hmm. the PC, whatever you want to call it. Um, now, the idea of a buffer overflow, why it's so bad is because if you can overwrite that buffer over that program counter with um, a value of your own choice, you can literally send the next instruction to anywhere in memory where you want it to be. Mm. So, for example, I've, I've created um, this bit of shell code here, which is um, a few instructions which will tell the ARM operator to create a shell session and then send it to me, send it to my mm -hmm. IP address, which is, um, where is it? I can't see it now for looking. Oh, it's there, yeah. it's, which is that. It'll send it to mm -hmm. that on this part. Mm -hmm. so, and this is currently listening now because I'm using this netcat command. Um, what netcat does is what well, I've done, I specified it here to listen, listen to be verbose. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I've lost some carrot. Um, on this part. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's literally open this part up, listen for anything that's coming towards it. And do you know my IP address because it says up here. Yep. This, this session underneath is. This everything on the left hand side is my laptop just to mm -hmm. reiterate that. So I've got two shells open. This is all my um Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do now is run server, um, which is the vulnerable program. So it's to say it gives the greetings to Emily. Um gives the server listening. So what I could do is if I wanted to, um um, if I could do something like echo, oh, I could straight away. I could do. I could do, run a netcat to the IP address and that part which it's listening to, mm -hmm. um, just to give you an idea. So I could just write gerbil push return, you know, and then it, it ends. I don't know if you noticed that. I mm -hmm. did actually have it so it printed out everything, what it's sent and what it's received with and stuff. But if you looked at the shell card here. This bit here, when it was compiled, this bit, what I've just highlighted, was actually um, commented out mm -hmm. because I, I just wanted to quickly get to the actual part where, you know, rather than stepping through it all and creating breakpoints, so if I just wanted it to, to crash and then to stop and give me what was going wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split this, oops, not that way. Um, I'm going to sp split this. I'm going to create another. Not my split because that's something else. Um, what I was going to do. You know, we were talking about script kiddies before, Emily. Mm -hmm. Metasploit is one of those things that I had to. You know, I had to actually install Metasploit yesterday just for this example. Because <laughs> I because uh, I wanted to create some shell code and because I wanted to show you how to create the shell code. Yeah. You know, there's a MS, MSF Venom, which is really, really good for that job. And that's the only thing I ever use it for. Mm. Um, but Metasploit is a script kiddie thing. Um, I've you're, not even, you're not allowed to use that in your OSCP exam either. You can use Venom, though. Um, SSH230. Because I'm doing this demonstration, I've actually changed my um, part address for my SSH session. Okay. So, CD 
be off example. Now, what was I going to do? Yeah, I've, I've got a list of shortcuts here for things that I type out a lot of the time, mm -hmm. such as this. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to I'm going to restart. Um, I'm going to restart this server, and I'm now going to create. I'm going to um, let me just check this bit works first because sometimes it doesn't. Ah, oh, it's giving me lots of fun. Open SS. Oh, it's because of my FTP. So I'll tell you what I'll do. Will that work? Yes. Right, I'm going to have to use minus V then, aren't I? Okay, I know what I'm doing. Um, so if I just type. And what this is going to do, this is going to set a GDB server session listening to, um, it's going to attach to the actual server instance that's running, which is four, six, uh, sorry, six, seven, six, five. Mm -hmm. And then, then I'll be able to, you know, con continue from there. So if I, so that's that running. Emily, if have I you did, come across GDB before? No. Right, it's oh. a debugger shell. So basically, uh. what it allows you to do is look at the internals of a binary program and see what calls it's making, what code it's executing. Right, I see. And you can also step forward and back and analyze variables mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so I've attached, I've attached that pad. It's listening now for that part. So I don't need my listener anymore. So what I can do is use GDB multi-server and use the target remote. Can I do this all in one? No, I didn't think so. Um, GDB multi-server. Why is GDB multi not found? Oh, I'm not sure, actually. Right, okay. So I'm going to continue from there now. The program's not being run because I've not set the target. That's why, silly me. So what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm now targeting, I'm kind of remote accessing mm -hmm. the GDB server, which is running on that part, which you've just seen me set up. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of like putting a, a probe on an engine or a scope on an engine mm. in, in more sort of engineering terms. Mm -hmm. C to continue. So I'm, it's currently now running because once I attach to it, it throws everything, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do echo. In fact, let's see how many A's I've got. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten A's. If I do minus A, in fact, I don't even need to do minus A. 10, 20, 35, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I'm going to go over about 200, 300. So there's 300 A's that have been piped into mm. towards that address. Now, so... Mm -hmm. Your bad program is now take is going to accept three hundred capital A's. Mm -hmm. Three hundred um, capital A in hexadecimal is forty one. That's mm -hmm. kind of what what we're looking out for. We're looking out for a lot of forty ones. Now here the debugger is telling us at memory forty one forty one forty one it's crashed. Mm. The reason the reason why it's crashed there is because we've overwritten the program counter with four capital A's. Mm -hmm. um, which means we've we've, managed, we've just managed to control it. Mm -hmm. So what we've done here is, if we do um, in for registers, the PC, which is a program counter, that's currently at that address, which is 
than our it's what we've what we've just given it so we can think okay we could give it something else instead mm. such as any anything of our choosing really and a good thing would be to give it would be this which i'm highlighting in the top right hand corner which is the shell card because it's eased and i've made it easy for everyone mm -hmm. for this demonstration um that's where the shell card is so what i'm going to do now i'm going to work out how many capital a's there are mm -hmm. which is the bit before you use to control the program counter so you need to know how big the space is beforehand now there's a tool that we can use to do this which is part of metasploit um, and it's actually called pattern create and there's also a sister command of pattern offsets which you know you can once you find your create which i'm going to show you now mm -hmm. um so i can quit out of this now i can let it continue just so we can see everything crash at once um now quit from here now the pattern so if we do pattern create length we did 300 a's and we knew that crashed it so we're going to do 300 that's the pattern we're going to use there does that make sense yep so good is, uh let me just work out so each item in that entry in that string that it's produced is unique is it yeah so you can see so what we can do presumably is when we see that in the debugger what what the pc is set to we can look at that and then work out how far along the string it was exactly that mm -hmm. yeah okay. so i don't know if you also noticed as well the, the memory location here is a zero it, um, it's for, instead of 41 41 41 41 which is what we would have done mm -hmm. That would have been um, um, that would have been a dodgy number to have as in ARM. You can't use that as a program counter because it's it's four bytes aligned. Yeah. So that's why it's gone down to a zero. It's rounded. Uh, it yeah, it's rounded. If it were just forty three, it'd still be four zero. But if you'd have done a forty four, then it would have been a forty four. It would have been fine. It's to do with anyway. CPU addresses memory, isn't that basically? Yeah. Or, if the, four I, byte chunks I, rather than single bytes. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so we've got this pattern now. So what we want to do is now restart everything. So I'm going to restart because we've got a segmentation fault. Whenever you see this in a penetration test, segmentation faults, you always know. You cut it up. That's worth examining. For example, actually, this has been recorded, so I'm not going to say any names. Mm -hmm. um, so right, so we've got rerun the server. Now what we're doing here is reattaching the deep um the gdb server again um so it's because it's you know every time you restart it it changes its page as you probably know so now what we do we do your, our echo now this is where it actually no, we can still do the same echo minus a minus c means you can use binary characters but i've not used them yet so for these examples, I've not needed them, but you'll see what, what the minus C does when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Whoops, I'm not using that, I'm using this. So when we run this now, and then pipe that through, send that to the server. Oh, bugger. You didn't have right. a DB session, did you? No, yeah, you're correct, I didn't. <laughs> so, multi arch server. Um, Attach it to that. Mm -hmm. Get it to continue. So then it's that's crashed because I've just already got, so I'd already sent loads of information, which is in fact it's been stuck we in might be able to use this. Yeah, we might actually be able to use this. Let's just do inf info oh, info registers. So there we go. There's a PC, but it's just complaining. Oh, that's the same one, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. So what I'm going to do now, just quit out of that. Yeah, quit there so everything crashes. I'm just going to test pattern, pattern offset uses a query command. So when you do the queue, you actually give it the pattern mm -hmm. of which it's just found, and it knows it's the length, length of that. Mm -hmm. But it's actually... Hopefully this works, it'll save me time. Yes, 56. 
Right, so the exact match is off offset 56. So what that means is that 56 characters were not bothered about to control this program counter. What we're bothered about is the four characters that come after that. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't, this is where I'm a bit dubious now because it wasn't working when I did 56 before. <laughs> um, hopefully this still will happen. Okay, so what, we, what I'm going to do now is one third time. Just for this, just for argument's sake, I'm going to do um, echo minus. I'm just getting this set up ready now. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, fifty. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we can do zero x, zero four, zero x, zero three, zero x. 0, 2, 0, X, 0, 1. And I'm going to stop there because I'm not going to do anything mm -hmm. to go past that because we've got our, um, what's it called in the card, which we don't want to overwrite, our shell shell card. Mm -hmm. I could have put a load of knobs in there um, at the beginning of it to just yeah. for, for, for arguments there, but I'm not going to. Yeah, so it's um, pretty exploited, basically, the server, isn't it? It's got an expert. It is, yeah. Okay. I've, well, I've, I've just faffed around with it just... To, you know, just to describe what a buffer overflow is, you wouldn't you wouldn't get this unless she was a company, which I'm not going to mention. <laughs> no, ex ex um, so. so normally you actually have to craft that into memory as well, don't you? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, what you'd normally do is you would you would give it. If, say, so for example, it's to, you know this buffer overflow, this um, buffer overflow, it's taking packets it's, it's listening on one of the parts and it's thinking okay i'm going to use this for um you know i'm whatever characters it's receiving so you'd put the shell code within that string mm -hmm. now the thing is when you create shell code you've got to get rid of things like carriage returns and um null characters because when you send a string it uses a null character as a kind of delimiter character for a string End of string. Standard. Yeah, so so if you send say a thousand characters of shell card, it's not going to be a thousand because that's way too big. But if you don't know if you sent a thousand characters and the second character was a double zero, mm -hmm. um, hexadecimal zero, should I say? Then it's going to stop right there, and everything else after it is going to be garbage. Yeah. Um, so you've got to usually you've got to find out what your bad characters are, and then specify with MSF Venom or however you do your card. Um, the reason why I use MSF Venom nowadays is because it's so much easier than the normal way I used to do it years ago, which was if you've got your shell code and sorry, if you've got your assembly program and you have got you have got zeros in there, you can you can twiddle with it to know to do like an XR against two you know you know could, you could use another value which does nothing instead so for example an xr against two registers which are the same say for example r1 and r1 mm -hmm. you know that's not going to do anything but that command you can swap for the zero so it continues it's working if that makes sense yeah so it's just well, do, it's you do things like that when you have when you can't have a zero yeah, exactly, and it's the you nuts. Know, but MSF Venom it does it all for you. So, mm. you know, be, being <laughs> becoming a script kid, it can be useful at times. Okay, um, so we've, what we've done there, so we've now we've got that we've controlled. That's that we're going, what we're going to try and do now is to see whether or not this is correct. Mm. So when it crashes next time, we should see the address one, two, three, four. Um, let me just add this before I start up the debuggers again. So if I go through here, whoops, it's here. Start the server. Start the listener. Uh, not that. Attach the server. Um, do this bit, which... Cause I'm running people that find typing IP addresses dead slow. Mm. So things like this I like to just have somewhere and just send continue so now now if we run this hopefully it will crash with zero um, one two three four and as we can see there mm -hmm. zero one zero two zero three zero four 
You've probably noticed that I've put that in four, three, two, one in reverse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reason I've done that is because my arm instruction, the arm architecture with the Raspberry Pi is actually a little Endian, or it is with the one that I'm using. Um, and so for that, you would, you know, things, characters get moved backwards. So, for example, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to try to do the actual exploit. Um, we've, you know, we've got this working. This is our exploit. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a copy of that. Um, and I'm going to put it in my notes pad because I oh, don't tell me that's exactly the same one that I needed. I bet it is, you know. Oh, no, it's not. It's different. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'll just it delete that. <laughs> um, so that's that's literally our exploit. Now, we've seen that we can control the program counter. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do now, we're going to run this. And we're not even going to run debugger anymore because we don't need to. This I can, get, I can quit out of this, which means everything else will reset. Core dumps, blah, 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 whatever. So now, server is running. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm going to create my netcat listener. Um, on port 45454, because that's the port which I put into my shell code, which it's going to connect to, as well as my IP address. So hopefully now, this is where SAD's live demonstration <laughs> happens. Um, shell code is stored at that address. So like I said before, we need to put that address in backwards. So let's go back to my exploit, come back here. Now the minus C allows me to type in these as characters. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you an example there. So let me put that to zero one and I'll get rid of that next comment. So if I press return now, what's it done? Echo, so echo, lots yeah, of A's. Like control codes aren't they? So yeah, aren't they? So it's not really going to do an awful lot. Hmm. No, if I if I do my forty two forty two forty or forty two forty three forty four forty five. Yeah, that'll be alright, won't it? Because that'll be yeah. Because it'll be should be forty two is B, forty three is C. I'll just leave it there because <laughs> you, you get the gist. Mm -hmm. Um, C is B C at the end here. Mm. Right, so now we can swap this for our, oh yeah, get rid of that as well because yeah, one it's actually good. sent, get there. So the first one will be 7E, mm -hmm. the next one will be 92, C4. the next one will be, any guesses? C4. Correct, and this one should be? C4. Mm -hmm. Yep. So hopefully, what this is going to say about when this when it crashes, the program counter will be overwritten with the memory address of this. Mm -hmm. This should now activate and send a shell back to the bottom left-hand corner here. So once I press return, oh. yes, connection received. So I can do ID here. I am mm -hmm. um, I'm myself because I was myself, which I created to if I do something like cat etc shadow pipe that through word count minus l just so you don't see the file you can see how many lines in there mm -hmm. permission denied it doesn't yeah, allow me to you're running as gerbil as you yeah exactly your idea is one so if I was to say I do something like um head minus one etc Password, and then I could do something like echo Emily. Oops, colon colon, no password. And then if I say just put the rest of that in there, mm -hmm. oh, you're going to ghost root <laughs> exactly. That's so. So we've got to do that with no password there, but it won't work on my system because it's too secure. So I do apologize. <laughs> so, oops, nope. Oh, shucks. Oops, so if I do etc password, and guess what happens? You should get an access tonight because you're not root. <laughs> no, I've, I've forgotten that, sim that, cool, that uh, speech marks at the very beginning there after echo. So, what I'm going to do is 
it's gonna do oh so you've got no read line in your um shell code then so you uh, command editing characters other than oh yeah I can, I can do command editing i can if i wanted to what i would do is set up another server listener and then send myself a brand new shell so then i've yeah. literally I've got a brand new session up. And yeah, but sorry, the, the exploit bit, presumably, because it's a small payload, it is very simplistic, so you're not going to get all the whistles and bells. Um, that's so because you know. it's, um, yeah, it's, I think what, what it does is uses SH or something, because as you can yeah. see, there's no command prompts there. There is, um, I do have on my works laptop, not on this one, a few things, tweaks and things, which I would normally run to, to get a better shell. For example, you can run a bit of Python code and yeah. then get that sent out um, to another listener. So the your other listener then would be just like a proper session. Yeah. Um, so with this and stuff, you can do Vi and stuff, but it's not really, um, not really advisable. So if I do that now, permission denied again. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so there we are. That's that's what happens. How you would get shell on a vulnerable server, mm. such as the one I've created. Mm. Now, when I was saying before, so if I'm going to exit out of that, um, when I said before, you can actually, um, depending on who you're running as, you can do different things. If I say run server as root, so I'm going to run it sudo now, password is, I think that's right, yeah, so go back to my exploit, change, set seven is the same, because it usually always is, um, b8, and then you've got your 86, and your one four. One four, thanks. One four, return. Listen, it's connection received. So if I do ID now, whoops, not there, there. In the right terminal. <laughs> yeah, right, do ID here. There we go. I'm out now. Mm -hmm. So if I was to do cat eighties, oops. In fact, if I show you if config, uh, no command completion either. <laughs> I know, it's pain. So you can see the IP address of my um, Raspberry Pi there now, yeah. even though the original wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And then I could do cat etc shadow pipe that for WC minus L. And I've got 40 accounts, or 40 um, entries yeah. in that file. Mm -hmm. No permission denied. And if I was to cut and paste this bit, where was I? Do, 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 do. If I was to do that, so if I did um, tail minus one further, you can see Emily now in the password file. Ghosted as root. So I can't really do anything now because my system's too secure because I wouldn't be able to S, S you in as you. Mm -hmm. I'll try it now. Not working. Yeah. It, would, it wouldn't let me SSH into it. Because you don't have a proper TTY, isn't it? There's yeah. A TTY on there. Yeah. So if I, if I did, maybe. In fact, um, so that's, I think that's about it, really. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to, I need to delete that, but I'll do that offline. Mm -hmm. So, any questions, anybody? Uh, or anything like that? I guess. Well, that's, that's, go on. I was just this is say... why you would have like Apache running as a, a user, which wouldn't allow you to do things like mm. higher, high privileged things mm -hmm. and stuff. Right. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. So if I just try and summarize all of this, it's obviously the buffer overflow exploit then lets you get a sort of a, a remote shell. If that's what you, uh, part of the part of the code that you inject into memory which obviously you you included in the server anyway yeah um, but that gives you the same 
privileges privileges is as the user that was running the server in the first place exactly yeah so yeah what whatever is running as the server mm -hmm. is what um is what the privileges you will get mm -hmm. once once you've done it's one of the reasons why a lot of servers these days have a nobody type user or a they drop their privileges when they start. So they need certain privileges to start their process up. But once they've got them, once they've got the process up and running, databases often do this. They, they drop to um, an unprivileged user mm -hmm. to prevent this kind of thing. So if someone did exploit it, um, they wouldn't be able to do much. You mm -hmm. certainly don't want people running havoc with your MySQL server or your Nginx or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm just, just going to try to in and see if I got traditional. I can't remember who my IP address was. 76, I think it was. So Four five 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 six minus E. Um, ah, it's not letting me. So there you go. I wonder why it's telling me the gerbil is just doing that, and it's, it looks like something I will have done that, and I probably did do young ago, but Evan, never mind. <laughs> Any more questions or anything? Did you enjoy that? Did it make sense? Yeah, it was interesting. Oh. Interesting to get a tasting of what you do for a living. <laughs> or part of, anyway. Yeah, part of. Part of. The main, the main stuff I do is more hardware-based. Hmm. So. But no, okay, one okay. of those things I've always heard in, you know, movies and obviously, uh, you know, other, other people talk about buffer overflows occasionally and I just never really understood what it actually is and what it can do. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a kind of, it is a vulnerability. Um, a lot of the time, a lot of the reasons why you'll get, for example, let us look at the shell card again. You've, oops, where is it? For example, you've got this printf here. Mm -hmm. You've got this, sorry, before the printf, you've got the reading of all these characters. Sometimes you may have say, a kind of string copy, say, um, I don't know, uh, let's call it desk, because it's making it more realistic, desk, and then you'll have buffer, and what string copy does, it copies, say, mm -hmm. everything from one to another, um, character by character, but if desk was smaller than buffer, that's when things like that would normally happen. Right. Because you're not giving any value there. Now, there's also a string copy, which specifies, um, which is, the, the class, this is a safe, oh, it's not actually safe, but this class is a safe because the 10, you know, you're specifying how many is a maximum amount of characters, mm -hmm. which is allowed to copy. So that's kind of, help save um, it's a bounce yeah. yeah. but even then the programmer could say okay then 10 characters here but the 10th character is going to be um, something that it, you know, they might get the values wrong or they might get zeros and ones at the beginning of arrays mixed up or whatever mm -hmm. um, and they could mess things up there as well so you know, they could get that value wrong which means it's still trying to copy into a smaller buffer than what it's allowed Hmm. Um, and you know, so it's, it's safer, but it's not. There is another one, and I can't remember what it's actually called. Is it Stuart Ico in copy or something? Or Stuart S, S copy? I can't remember this, but no, I'm I sure don't know those in depth because C is not my main. Yeah. Use, but, uh... Uh, but uh, lot of, I think what a lot of programs do these days is instead of allocating that stuff on the stack they'll allocate it um, on the heap so it's uh there will be an, a malloc to create it but that ha 
brings its own set of problems. Yeah, there is, there is with this as well, for example, this um, shell code, if I was to put this on the heap by doing it as an extra, um, a, a, a variable, a global variable, so if I was to uh, pull that out and put it before this int statement, um, then it would be, um, you know, the, the, the value which you'd get would be a, a lot smaller. So this this value would probably be about five five characters long or something, rather than eight characters like it is here, because this is the memory which uses get use, gets used. Go with um, your um, text segment, is it? Um, I can't think off the top of my head. You know, I think it might. I think it might do. Um, but it's just that's you know that's when it that's when the heap is, isn't it? The globals go on the heap, and I think the local variables and stuff go on the actual stack but i could get i might have them mixed up but i think i'm right <laughs> i'm not c programming anymore um so. but uh what else is that um yeah and i think if there's anything else i need to mention i think that the thing my question really would be what so Given that your server already has the exploit code embedded in it for convenience for the demonstration, yeah, how much extra effort do you have to go to to craft an exploit that you inject via the actual um, buffer overrun? Well, the way what you did that this is um, my server which I'm running is ASLR, which which is. Um, I can't remember what it stands for. Um, it's an address of the, you know, the memory you've got, the addresses of stuff. When you when you run it, it <clears throat> randomizes it. Yeah. Yeah. And this is to stop things being hard coded in certain places. Um, for example, if you've got the libc, uh, the libc um, library stored somewhere and that was in a static place all the time, you'd know where to go. With in that library to create a shell or to run an exec yeah. mm -hmm. kind of command. Um, and what they're trying to do to, to, to try and get around that, pardon me, they try and get around that um, by randomizing it all and stuff. So what, you, what you've got to do is you, you, you then create your shell code as more staged than things. So you may preload memory somewhere with something um and then use that value for um you may then try and find somewhere in memory like um, a sequence of hex characters which makes up the value the address of the other value that you wanted to do so for example see here where we did the example of where is it um, 42, 43, and that becomes a B and a C. Mm -hmm. um, if you are looking for, say, say, say the memory address of your server was 43, 42, 43, 44, 45. Now, and that was in a static place somewhere in one of the libraries, and you knew where that was. What you can do is, is get the program counter to visit that part of the memory. Um, that address, which would then give you that code to then fill out, which should then um, things are. Oh, what you could do is, if say you load up, if you've managed to crack, you know when we looked at the um, when we looked at where is it this one, and we looked at the um, registers. So we've got this registered, which had that memory address. This register, or this memory address. If we were to manage to control them as well. We would be able to fill them up with memory addresses of different things, and then say, for example, you'd find the new monic to say load um, R1 into PC and see what find where that exists mm -hmm. in memory. And if that's stuff, if that is found somewhere where it's is stored, then you know that you can go to that address to then load whatever into. Um, the PC counter, 
uh, sorry, the program counter, and then that will then continue down that path, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. So I, I, it's a bit complicated. What I think, what I hear is that you have to probe around to um, to craft an environment that you can then exploit, which is why it's harder, because it's not handed to you on a plate like you've done with your example there. You exactly. You have to probe it and you have to make guesses and try to organize things despite the system not actually trying to help you with it. <laughs> That's, that sounds about right. It's, it's you know, the, the, these things, like even when I created this program, I had to, I had to give extra um, parameters there to allow me to create, create this program to do what I want to do because you've got stack canaries, for example, which are right. stack canaries. It's, when you've got these canaries, they're literally a couple of bytes which happen after the um, stack and what happens if they change in any way for example you've just overwritten it with whatever mm -hmm. it'll complain and it'll crash but safely rather than telling you you know allowing you to do that's whereas if you progress you know if you get rid of the um say stack protector and stuff then you've got two things and people wouldn't normally have this in their card or they wouldn't if i me and my job if i was to see anything you know, anything like this or this and especially that in any kind of card then it would be just flag. it would be flagged yeah definitely um so um yeah anything else no i think that's, For me? that's fine yeah that, that was really useful thank you so glad you liked it there we are. That's good. Thank you for that. So, is that one that you've done at one of the um, the shows, or is it one that you're maybe thinking of doing as a like a? a well, this 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 um example that I've just done. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. No, I just see. Well, it was just something knocked up today, and I, I looked a bit of it last night because um, I knew I had to get MSF. Um, oh, what's it called? Metasploit onto the system because I want to see in fact that's what I've not shown yeah um in fact I don't really need to because I was going to I was going to do it the long way of also showing you how I crafted this shell card but it's here this this command um it's telling me the pay, the payload to use shell reverse tcp um format of c code bad characters zero because it's arm you're going to get zeros all over the place unless you put it into thumb mode, mm. which is not what this has done. Um, but then I thought, well, it doesn't matter about bad characters because I'm putting it straight into my code anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it doesn't, you know, it, you just you just put it straight in and let it run and it'll do what you want it to do. And the host, which is my my address and the parts, which is four five four five four, because it's easy That's to like type. All back address, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, so when so what happens is when you kind of control it, in fact I'll run it now just so you can see it what it does. Yeah. Um let's come out of there. I've still got my session open. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so MSF. Um get rid of the bad characters because it's not gonna come up with anything but being arm. But you can change the C to things like Python and different other things. Yeah, all right. Which makes it easier. That's what you end up with. Ah. Um, it's, it's quite it's quite good in that respect. So, so that's the compiled binary of that that code. Yeah. Like, what you what what I've done with work because I I've actually got I've got all these somewhere on my work's laptop, um, which. I've got a collection of them which I've actually made myself using um, compiled C code. You know, when I've compiled C and stuff, and it's it, I have got a bit of the zero because what you do with um, ARM, you can put it into thumb mode, and that turns the, the instructions a lot smaller, mm -hmm. so you end up with less zeros. Mm. And 
if you look here somewhere, you know, you may find the part and the address which I've used, but <laughs> I, I wouldn't put, I'd probably, uh, I don't know. I could just, one way of doing it, you could do that actually, is, I wonder if, just out of it. You got hex echo. maybe. I'm just going to try it with this one line, see what it looks like. But the, the, usually the addresses and stuff will come. That's, uh, this will give me my probably my command for what it's actually running on that side. So if I did echo minus a sh, oh, so you can see. tell this, this this will have a bin before it or something maybe. I don't know. There you go, bin sh. Mm -hmm. uh, 